Well, Foreign Minister, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, first of all, your comment on the Navy seizing a ship loaded with medicine, uh, food and other supplies. Uh, they claim it's carrying provisions for the defeated rebels. The mission organizers say it's for Tamil civilians. Do you know anything about it? So obviously, any ship having to come into territorial waters of a country has to be cleared in terms of its requirements for clearance. And here is, in the event any ship is trying to enter our waters, we have the right of arrest and we must inspect. And that is a procedure. And in this regard, whatever action we are taking is a legitimate purpose towards establishing the intentions of the ones who are trying to bring this ship in. It can be threatening our national security or at the same time it can be a humanitarian exercise. But let us examine that and let us respond accordingly. Okay, well, we'll talk about national security in just a moment. Um, first of all, let's, uh, let's put that first question um, from one of our Vox Pops uh, of the Tambles outside Parliament. Uh, the young lad said, um, I just hope, can you, can you promise that Tamils will be safe? What about the Tamils who are already there in the country? Aren't they safe? Fifty-four percent of the Tamil community lives outside the north and the eastern provinces of Sri Lanka and they are in the, amongst, uh, the other, other communities. And how safe are they? And they have lived all this time. They have prospered. There are so much investments that have taken place, even in the heart of Colombo, running into billions of uh, uh, rupees. And all that has been made by the Tamil community. Haven't they been safe all this time? What about their confidence in the system? What about the ones who are coming into the country? Ones who have fled the whole of the LTT a few weeks ago are now part of the community very much. And they have been cared for by the government of Sri Lanka. What about the parents of uh, Prabhakar, the tyrant Prabhakar? They have been cared for by the government of Sri Lanka. And why this uh, propaganda spin being given that Tamils are not safe in Sri Lanka? They were not safe the time the LTT was holding them throughout in the three provinces finally that fell uh, into the hands of the government in Mana, in Kilnochi and in Mulatil and that is the record what the LTT brought about and we must put an end to this type of spin being given by interested groups uh, still batting for the LTT. This young lad uh, you just mentioned they have been misguided it's a sin to misguide the youth and the very young ones. They, that was part of the LTT strategy also. How many young people lost their youth into the LTT because they well, became talk, child soldiers? You talk about the And human, they lost their cost. youth throughout in their lives. One figure I saw, the human cost, 6,000 Sri Lankan soldiers killed in the last three years of war. Many more tigers, uh, ti rebels, lost their lives. How do you begin a reconciliation process, which is the subject of another one of our questions. How do you begin that after, what is it, uh, 21 years of war and after so many have died? It's more than 21 years. It's 27 years uh, where the LTT was uh, trying to become a terrorist outfit in Sri Lanka and played that into the highest degree in terms of becoming the world's most brutal terrorist organization. That is now the history, or the, it's a matter of yesterday, where Sri Lanka is concerned. We have completely eliminated the LTT as a terrorist organization within Sri Lanka. But there can be certain concerns we still have in, a, in the international community. That is why we are trying to have a comprehensive engagement with the outside world, so that we could see that the LTT will not be able to manifest in various other forms in the world and we'll be addressing that matter as a matter of priority. About the reconciliation, right now we have got 300,000 uh, our Sri Lankans coming from the Tamil community who were held hitherto by the LTT in the no-file zone as a human shield who escaped the LTT hole and came into the hands of the government and we are now taking care of them. They are the ones that will become our spokesman in terms of the reconciliation process You're for the future. those who are held as human shields. Absolutely. I, 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 want to, I want to move on to this call for war crimes investigators, the allegations of war crimes. Sri Lanka, at the UN, uh, shrugged off calls for an inquiry. Would you welcome an inquiry to, to clear the air, if nothing else? Let us understand the definition of war crimes, how the definition is being given. And within the framework of that definition, where do you find Sri Lanka coming? A, a democracy? Uh, exercising the legitimate right of protecting its people uh, against terrorism and dealing with terrorism is a right that everyone has to deal with and if we fail to deal with terrorism 
during our period in office will be held accountable by our people to have failed in permitting terrorism to be there. And we have done so. And today I am happy to announce that we have eliminated terrorism because we dealt with it. That won't come within the definition of war crimes that people are trying to once again try to hide this up unnecessarily. Okay, well, you're, you're, you're resisting calls for investigators to go in. I want to move on to the displaced, the, the huge numbers of people who have left their homes, fled fighting at the beginning, many hundreds of thousands. How or what action are you taking now to try and return those displaced to their homes? And are you allowing complete humanitarian access to the camps? It's already allowed. There are over 52 agencies working within the uh, camps, within the villages, which we termed as the welfare villages. Uh, the UN agencies are already there. And uh, we have got around 16 INGOs, another 24 NGOs, who are backed by other international organizations, the ICRC included. And we are looking forward to see that they return back to their places of original habitat. That is what is most important to us, not to keep them in the welfare uh, villages, but to see that they return back to their own villages, where we'll develop the infrastructure, we'll provide water, electricity, and housing. One may ask, how are we going to do this? But we have done this previously on two occasions. Once, when tsunami struck us in the north and the east, we have cleared those areas and we have restored normalcy to all parts of the eastern and the southern part of Sri Lanka. We have done that once again in 2006 to 2008, uh, 2007 to 2008, in the eastern part of Sri Lanka, when we cleared the area from the LTT hole. And to do it for the third time, uh, I think, is not going to be a major challenge, but it's a, it's a need for us to address, and we'll do so with our capacity. At the same time, we have been getting enough and more assistance from outside uh, that we could channel into areas of development through the UN system. All right, Foreign Minister, we have to leave it there, but many thanks to you for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Greatly appreciate